Hello, this is John Kelsey with Wilson Kelsey Design. I'd like to take you through a kitchen renovation we completed recently. It was for a couple whose children were off to college and they were tired of their old kitchen and wanted to make it their own. There were a number of things that they talked about with us that were important. They wanted the kitchen to remind them of places that they traveled and to have very personal meaning. They wanted the kitchen to say welcome. Good food and great company can be found here. Let's take a look at the floor plan and look at all the space that were involved and then we'll talk specifically about the kitchen. So in addition to the kitchen, there was the family room, an old unused vestibule, an office, and the entry from the garage into the house coming in toward the kitchen. The family room and kitchen are one large space, and yet they'd always felt that the family room area never really was connected to the kitchen. And so one of the challenges was to come up with a solution that somehow tied those two spaces together so the room felt as one. The rear vestibule, unused, you'll later see becomes the home of a walk-in pantry. The office, too large, inefficient, challenged technologically, and the rear entry congested, claustrophobic, and the storage requirements were inconsistent with how the house was used. Now let's take a look at the kitchen itself, starting with the lighting in the ceiling. It was generic, and actually a lot of the lighting was in the wrong place. And the gap between the ceiling and the cabinets made the ceiling feel like it was too low. The work triangle itself worked fine, but there were some functionality issues around appliances, things like that, that really needed to be addressed. The window above the sink was too small. We felt we could do something there to bring in more light. The sink itself was a double sink, and the comment was that both compartments were too small and that they thought maybe that they would be better off with just one large single sink. The counters themselves were always cluttered. They told us none of those things had a home and they would love to find a way to declutter the counters. There was a corner cabinet that was described to us as being the place where things go to die. We were told they really needed a second dishwasher, one based on their lifestyle. And the other big concern, and this related to welcome and good food served here, was the island seating. Too tight, too narrow people banging knees, basically uncomfortable and unusable. Okay, now let's look at the family room in more detail. You can see the base cabinets actually jut out past the mantelpiece and the fireplace itself sits on a raised hearth. Both incredibly awkward and had nothing to do with how the kitchen actually was designed on the other side of the room. So the challenge was how can we resolve those issues? Let's look at the new kitchen plan and some of the things that we did to address the challenges that we just discussed. The workflow itself really didn't change substantially. We did shift the refrigerator slightly in order to create a landing zone as you come into the kitchen from the garage. We have a larger kitchen sink, a single sink, and a second dishwasher now in the island. The microwave sits in the island under the island countertop and immediately to its left is the mixer inside a cabinet and pops up on a lift up shelf and locks into position. And the round table is far more conducive to good conversation. Let's take a look at the finished kitchen now and see what we did to address a number of those design challenges. Starting with the ceiling, we reworked the lighting, putting it where it needs to be so that we have appropriate task and ambient lighting, and we added some eye candy with the chandelier over the table. The cabinets now go all the way to the top of the ceiling. It does two things. One, we get some additional storage, and two, the ceiling itself now feels higher than it actually is. At the end of the base cabinet, we can see we have a bookcase where now cookbooks are stored and readily accessible. We have the window, which is larger, bringing in more daylight. The sink, large single bowl sink now. And we have some small shelves, which let us work on keeping the counter more clean. And the corner base cabinet now, we have a solution, and we'll talk about that later, where things no longer can go to die. Let's look at the floor, because that was kind of fun. Originally red oak, we had it stripped, sanded, and it was bleached. Then decorative painter came in and applied the grid, and then it was ultimately sealed. The overall effect is that of a nice outdoor terrace. Shifting around to the left a little bit, let's take a look at the other side of the kitchen. And you can see where we added the second dishwasher. 
the glass front cabinets tend to recede. We consolidated all the built-ins into one large assembly, and what that did was gave us landing zones at either end of that wall where people come and go in and out of the kitchen. And here's a close-up detail of the landing zone to the left of the refrigerator. One interesting little note here is that all the cabinets are set at 20 inches above the counter as opposed to 18 inches above the counter. And what that does is it gave us room to put juicers, blenders fully assembled and let them tuck back in underneath the cabinets out of the way and maintain more clear counter space. And continuing the theme of clear counter space, we built the paper towel dispenser into the island. We strategically placed utensil drawers and knife drawers throughout the kitchen and the pantry. And then as well, we put a spice drawer immediately to the right of the cooktop. The pantry, custom pullouts, each located in a very specific place to account for very specific items that the client and customer wanted to use the pantry. And here's the Le Mans pullout, which solved the problem of corner cabinet. Put this slide in because I have a little pet peeve with kitchen islands. Oftentimes they seem to have a very confused identity. They can't figure out whether they're a table trying to be a piece of cabinetry or whether they're a piece of cabinetry trying to be a table. I've always felt that you should do one or the other and not mix the two. This I designed as a piece of furniture. You can see the, the wood base and the corner detail that I put into the island to help reinforce that notion and then completely changing the materials on the table end of the island with a glass top, a mosaic tile insert, and the painted base on the table. Here's a detailed shot of the cooktop wall. You can see the Jerusalem gold limestone and the matching hexagonal onyx tile as the backsplash. This was important to the family because these are the sort of things that reminded them of places that they'd traveled and brought very personal meaning into the kitchen for them. The other thing that contributed to that were the oak cabinets, which were finished with a white glaze. And here we see the larger window that brings more daylight in. And the gridded panes that you see across the top of the window relate to the upper panel of the upper cabinets. This is how you begin to tie all these architectural elements together by repeating pattern and form. Shifting over to the family room, and you see the repetition of the patterning going across the top of the cabinets and repeating the same details in the base cabinets, which is how we begin to bring the ends of both of these rooms together and create a common vocabulary for the whole space. The other thing we did here was to push the cabinetry back behind the mantle, and we actually pulled that forward a little bit. So the mantle now sits in its rightful place as the dominant form of the room and the room's focal point. And one other small detail was we moved the TV from the right hand cabinet to the left hand cabinet so when people are sitting watching TV they're now facing toward the kitchen. Now let's take a look at the other end of the space on the other side of the kitchen. Starting from the entry of the garage we'll move in toward the kitchen. You can see that the garage entry there's a utility closet and you'll see later that the storage is completely inappropriate. The office too large, inefficient, technologically challenged, and the rear vestibule, which as you'll see in the next slide, becomes the walk-in pantry. And here we have the newly designed mudroom office and pantry. The mudroom, you see coat storage on the right, there's a utility closet on the left, and you'll see in a picture shortly, there's an area of cubbies and storage and a bench that makes this area a whole lot more usable. The office is smaller, more efficient. There's a dedicated printer station. And one of the things that we did here was we put in French doors in the office, which bring a lot of daylight into the garage entry. And it also visually expands the mudroom by being able to see through the office to the outdoors so that it feels much larger than it actually is. And then, of course, the pantry. If you look at this little jiggy-jogged wall, what we were able to do was capture some additional deeper storage for the pantry so that we actually have quite a variety of different depths of storage for different things in the pantry. And here we see a photograph of the old vestibule, and you can see it really had become quite a catch-all for the office. And the finished new pantry. We brought a number of the details from the kitchen into the space for continuity, but we also wanted to give it its own identity, and we did so by changing the detail of the glass doors in the upper cabinets. 
and continuing sort of the fun element of the lighting, we used these frosted glass Murano fixtures. And here's the tired old office. Inefficient, technologically challenged, storage completely inappropriate based on how they use it today. And the new office, much more efficient. We have a large window which is actually designed and detailed exactly like a kitchen window so that from the outside of the house, the house exterior looks exactly the same. We have open shelves to the left and right of the window for homeowners' personal effects and memorabilia and then custom lateral files right there at your fingertips at the desk. And there are some spaces in a house that there's just no room to get a camera in to take a good picture. And taking a photograph of the printer area in the office was one of those instances. So I popped in this sketch so you could see what it looked like. And the upper cabinet, there's paper storage. And in the lower base cabinet, there's a small shredder. And now we get to see what that entry storage really looked like. And you can see the closet was an absolute mess. All sorts of things stacked on the floor. And our proposed solution, which we have some coat storage on the left, the room closet on the right, and then the other cubbies, drawers, things like that for phone, pocketbook, miscellaneous items. There's a charging station there, and then the bench with open storage below for shoes and boots. And then at the finished mudroom, again with the storage to the right, the shoe storage, the same Murano pendant fixture. So ultimately, I think the kitchen and the overall project really solved and addressed a number of things. But most importantly for the family, emotionally, I think it did three things. It celebrated the family's past and their history through the choice of materials and colors, patterns, and textures that were selected. And the artwork and accessories that were selected provide very personal meaning to the family. And it lives in the moment by saying good food, conversation, family, and friends. And it looks to the future through its casual aesthetic and flexible functionality. If you'd like to learn more about Wilson Kelsey Design, you can visit our website at www.wilsonkelseydesign.com. Thank you.